I think we're all guilty of this. I know I am. And if you're not, you definitely would be given the opportunity. The deadly selfie. Yes, I'm referring to selfies people take with wildlife. And you might think I'm being dramatic, like this cute picture is deadly. Give me a break. But I'm going to support my claim right away. So let's get to it. Many people have dreamt of a magical encounter with wildlife, either to take a selfie, to pet it, to cuddle it. And for many that have achieved this, it's been the best day or moment of their life. So why is it so deadly? I'm going to break it down into three categories. According to me, what is the most harmful to the least harmful? So the first one is when you pay for a wildlife encounter. The second one is a wildlife encounter in the wild habitat, in the wild. And the third is working or volunteering with wildlife. So let's get started. The first one paying for a wildlife photo or encounter. The world is slowly now waking up to the fact that paying for photo with a baby animal or any wildlife is usually the result of the animal being abused. Taken from the wild, sometimes their parents or um, group being killed in the process, and then them being put in a confined little room under terrible circumstances, not enough food, not enough water, not enough love, um, and being trained and used for the purpose of tourism so that they can take pictures and have the encounters and the people can make a profit out of their misery. Another thing that contributes to this, which I'm going to talk about a little more later, but it is volunteers that come to such centers. Many of these centers try to sell themselves like rescue or rehabilitation centers, like, oh, we saved these animals, we're trying to get them better, we're going to put them back into the wild so why don't you come and take a picture and play with them or work with us while we do that um the reason this is m most times like 99 percent of the times fake is because if you're an actual rehabilitation center you want to keep wildlife human encounters to a minimum because if you want the animal to be able to be rehabilitated into its natural habitat successfully and survive you don't want it to have contact with animals because there's a million things that could go wrong with that, you know? So that is one red flag to look. If you are a tourist or if you're a volunteer looking to go to one of these places, that's a big red flag. Like an actual rehabilitation center will not allow you to take pictures and definitely not allow you to touch their animals. They could allow you to see them from a distance and talk about it and educate you and raise awareness, but not any physical contact. So. That is also a big problem, as I said, for the volunteers that go to such places because they think they're making a difference. A lot of them just go for the pictures too. Like, let's be honest, I've encountered a lot of people that that's all they want. They want to look cool on Instagram, on Facebook. I'm not saying it's necessarily bad, but when that's your only motive, you're in the wrong place, hon, you know? So yeah, so that's the first one. and. I want to go into a bit um, about the can lion hunting. I'm going to make a separate video about this because there's so much detail. But basically, canned lion hunting actually starts from a young age where they take the babies from their mothers, they hand raise them so that people can come and play with them and take selfies with them. Then when they get to a bigger age, they start walking with lions so you can pay to walk with a lion. It's such an experience. Um, and then when they get too old for that too they usually sell them to be hunted and it's called can trophy hunted because they put them in this little space basically um it's enclosed by a fence so they can't run at all and they also can't defend themselves because they've been raised by humans so they're taught that humans equal love humans equal food or whatever so then this motherfucking asshole am i allowed to say that probably not so then this bad person <laughs> comes in with a gun and shoots the defenseless animal. So that is one way to see that what you might think is a harmless selfie or a harmless encounter actually has a lot behind it that causes lots of suffering and pain and even death to wildlife. So moving on. The second one I mentioned is a selfie 
in the wild with a wild animal. So what do I mean by this? You're on a safari um, or you're walking through the woods near your house or whatever, right? And you encounter a wild animal. It could be anything from a squirrel to a giraffe or I don't know what. The point is you want to try and take a picture. That's only normal. Um, a lot of people want to try and be in the picture too. I've definitely done that. So what is the proper way to do it for your safety and the animal's safety? The best way to do it is to take a picture with the animal of the animal from a safe distance so that you don't put yourself in danger, but that also you don't cause stress to the animal. You know, you, you have to remember it's their habitat, it's their environment. They need to stay, they need to feel safe. Imagine if some stranger just started coming into your home and like taking pictures or was trying to touch you, like not okay. So just remember that safe distance and be respectful of the animal in their space. Now, what I consider wrong is when people try to get too close. And often they do this also by trying to feed the animal. Like I saw that when I was in Brazil in the rainforest, people would give like fruit and other things too, but the fruit was like the best case scenario um, to cappuccino monkeys so that they could come close and they could take a picture or a video or touch it or whatever. Um, now you might think a banana for a monkey, whatever, that's what they eat, right? That's not the issue though. When you teach these animals, when you give them food, you teach them a few things. One, humans equal food, which is not a, always the case. Like you might just want to take a selfie. Someone else might want to grab them and sell them for the exotic pet trade. Someone else might just be an asshole and want to hurt them. You know, you never know. So you shouldn't encourage such behavior. As I said, the best thing to do is when you encounter a wild animal is just let it be and just admire it or take a picture of it from afar. That's also the most original experience, you know? Um, but then the last one, which I think is the least harmful, but it, it depends on your motives. It is what I mentioned um, a little earlier, volunteering or working with wild animals. No. First of all, let's split it into volunteers and workers because workers taking pictures usually equal something very different. If you're working at a place, you know the animal, um, you have to handle it most of the time, and you know the risks too. I mean, I would presume, at least if you've been hired to work with wild animals, you'd be educated on these things, you know? So I think it's very different, for example, and I'm not saying this to like make myself feel better, excuse myself. I'm just going to use me as an example though. Uh, when I was working uh, at a rehabilitation center or at the zoo, um, the pictures I have, I'm pretty sure at least most of them, I don't want to lie to you guys, um, but are when I was already handling an animal for some reason for example at the rehabilitation center i might have been picking up the baby hedgehogs to feed them because it was their time for feeding and snuck in a picture there or at the zoo i might have been showing off a snake to the kids and talking about it and its habitat and raising awareness and someone took a picture of me doing that so that i don't find is wrong because you already have to um handle the animal so the problem with taking pictures with animals and handling them is that handling them creates stress and it also creates them sometimes feeling safer with um, people which as i said you don't necessarily want because it is a wild animal you want it to be able to defend itself um, especially if it's at a rehabilitation center you want it to fear humans almost because you have to think of the worst case scenario that a lot of humans are not good people um, so you don't want the animal to be trusting all over the place i'm sorry and just get all the thoughts but yeah so yeah so you want to handle it as least as possible as i said so if you're already going to handle the animal you need to feed it you need to change a bandage or you need for some kind of educational reason to show it and to handle it i think that's an okay time to take a picture because you're not handling it and stressing it out just for the sole picture for the sole reason of taking a picture there we go. So yeah, going into volunteers now, I think it's a bit trickier just because the motives there aren't clear. Like if you're working 
with wildlife, you must really love it because people that work with wildlife know they're not in it for the money. <laughs> so you must really love uh, wildlife and your motives must be in the right place. Let's just say your heart must be in the right place. But as a volunteer, it gets a bit trickier. And you might think why these people are volunteering their time to make a difference, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, a lot of times that's true. But recently it's become such a trend to be an environmentalist and to work with wildlife and this and that, that not everyone has the right intention. I've experienced it many times while working that I have volunteers that are there for the wrong reasons. Not that they're bad people by any means or not that they're selfish or anything like that. It's just they're there because they really want to be able to tell their friends or their family or social media that guys look i am a good person i'm playing with this animal i'm so cool so different those are all the wrong motives like i don't think i need to go into that that much right i hope but you should be working anything you do should be for the right motive i believe and i hope most people do believe if you're not there for the right reasons don't do it and one of the really good things costa rica did recently because I think it was like Mark the seventh country in the world where uh, wildlife selfies impacted negatively wildlife welfare. Um, and that was because a lot of volunteers would go to Costa Rica, take pictures of sloths and stuff, them with sloths. Everyone loved them. It became a huge craze like sloths, oh my God. And the exotic pet trade went up on those animals. So it, they actually were promoting, it was like they were promoting that like oh look i'm with a sloth oh my god it's so cute i want to take one home so you're kind of promoting that um so they actually banned uh volunteers by having contact and being able to take pictures with wildlife which might sound harsh but i actually think it's good because then the people that go there are there for the right reasons you know that you're there to help and to make a difference not because you want to show anything or you want to i don't know i hope that makes sense um, and that was the other thing I was going to say, like your motives could be pure. Um, they could be the best in the world and you might have the best intentions and people could still take it the wrong way. Like I've seen that a lot. Whenever I post a picture with an animal, I try to make it educational. I try to raise awareness about some sort of issue related to the animal. And many times I'm disappointed because I just get people commenting like, oh my god like that's so cute i want a jaguar or i want to hold a jaguar they totally miss the point and it's not necessarily their fault see a person with an animal no one really reads the descriptions most times unfortunately and your first reaction is like i want that too um so even if your motives are pure and your heart is in the right place you might still be giving off the wrong message because people are not willing to listen or they just see the image and don't think like oh she actually works at a rehabilitation center like i should see what she's doing i should see how i can help it's like no she animal equals cute picture equals i want to do the same thing so you have to be aware of that too i'm trying to be more aware of guys i'm sorry i'm going to tantrum now but when i was working at the rehabilitation center i had four baby hedgehogs that I would take home with me because they needed feeding every two hours so I would feed them while I was at work and then I would have to take them home with me to continue their feedings and I'd post like, pictures and videos of them being fed with some information on them and on one specific one where I'm feed feeding them I wrote with like huge letters disclaimer these are not my pets this is their story first message I get because this was on my story oh my god they're so cute do you know where i can get one like bitch really people are gonna just take from it what they want to take i'm getting heated now but yeah so honestly the best thing you can do um is avoid taking a picture with a wild animal now i'm saying that but I'm guilty because even though I know the dangers of it, I continue to do it for personal reasons too, because I think it's cute and because I like it, but also because I do think that with the right audience, you can make a difference. 
So what is being done in general about this issue? As I said, like the example with Costa Rica, many places are not allowing their volunteers or visitors to take pictures anymore and have human interactions, which is really, really good. Uh, so they're cranking down on that, which is very important. Um, and also Instagram, huge shout out to Instagram because I think, okay, they can still improve, but they're doing a good job. Um, they've recently acknowledged the growing problem of wildlife selfies um, and the images that promote uh, the exotic pet trade or animal cruelty, etc. So yeah, it says Instagram has installed a new feature that alerts users to the harm associated with these types of images. Good job. And also it is helping users find more, find out more about endangered wildlife and animal exploration, exploitation, wow, I can't read, by directing them to leading conservation organizations. That is fantastic. So I haven't come across this on Instagram yet. Um, but I want to check it out further. Let me know in the comments if any of you have seen it and how it works and everything. Um, but yeah, so that's really cool that they're starting to do that. So, in conclusion, uh, now I hope you understand why I refer to it as the deadly selfie. Um, and I just want to like bring everything together and say like, or pay for a wildlife photo or encounter as harmless as it seems, just don't do it, no matter what they tell you. Don't do it. Um, number two, if you are in the wild, you see a wild animal you want to take a picture with, it's fine, do it, keep a safe distance, respect the animal, don't feed them, don't try and touch it, just like appreciate it from afar, snap a pic. Um, and thirdly, if you are working or volunteering, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, make sure you're taking a picture and posting it under good circumstances. Um, that's kind of a little summary. Hope that was helpful. Please comment below if you have any uh, questions or anything you want to add, or you can message me on Instagram. I'll also have it linked somewhere here. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye guys.